little camera out of my face. Get away from me! I just swear to God, I'll jump. <laughs> Doc, this is like not how this is supposed what? to work. This is the only one. This is for me. I got it on camera. I'm sorry. I run every day. I'm sorry. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Greetings. I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Cheaters. Please meet Lance Follette, a young man struggling with fears that his wife strays. Seeking a dignified resolution, a tormented Lance appeals to Cheaters for professional assistance. Lance Follette age 26 a computer programmer worried that his wife has found satisfaction from different hardware at a very young age my parents went through a very nasty divorce it really left me with a bad taste in my mouth even when my mom remarried at the age of 14 it was even then I was like you know I don't think this is for me I, don't, I just couldn't picture myself going down that road that she had to go down and I saw it and it just, I was blown away. I was like, this is the one. When Ellie and I were first married, I was on top of the world, you know? I, I didn't think that anything could go wrong. I had a great job, we had a house, you know, the white picket fence, everything you could possibly think of. We would spend our time on the beach, you know, just hanging out, just me and her. I'm constantly out of town looking for work. You know, I'm in Florida one week, the next month I'll be in California. I come home, all I want to do is see my wife. I want a hug and a kiss and, hey, honey, how was your week? How was everything? Now, it's like, I get home and sometimes she's not even there. And, you know, it's, it's, it's like I don't even exist, even when we're laying in bed together. If I were her, I would probably be looking outside myself, you know? It just, it really pains me to think that I can't provide for her in the, in the way that she deserves to be provided for. And right now, I just want to know. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Suspect's identity withheld, age 28. An unemployed woman suspected of using her free time to nurture a new relationship. Investigation day two. Agents, hot on the suspect's tail, follow her down a busy thoroughfare. After a brief pursuit, the suspect arrives at an office building. The suspect, whose identity remains withheld, parks her car and waits out front. A short time later, detectives notice a strange figure approaching the suspect's vehicle. An unidentified male hops into her car and the twosome embark. A few miles away, the suspect and her companion arrive at a bar known for its happy hour specials. Once inside, the couple sidle up to the bar and order some cocktails. The suspect's companion seems eager to tell her a secret as he leans in and lingers near her ear. After a while, the twosome pay the tab and hit the road. After the suspect's companion returns to his vehicle, he follows the suspect back to the residence she shares with her husband and his parents. Operatives monitor the suspect and her companion through hidden cameras placed inside by Lance. The suspect and her companion sit and relax after a hard day at work. Sometime later, the couple unexpectedly adjourn to a part of the house not covered by cameras, ending this particular day of investigation. Investigation Day 7. A surveillance team monitors feeds from motion-sensitive cameras placed inside. Internal cameras show Lance as he quickly gives his wife a hug and says goodbye to his mother, Cindy, before rushing out the door. Lance informed agents earlier in the day that he had to leave town for a job interview. Shortly after Lance's mom leaves for work, the companion from prior surveillance emerges and is positively identified as Lance's stepfather, Mark Barton. The companion chats on the phone and sips some wine while the suspect quietly watches TV in the corner. After companion Barton finishes his phone conversation, he and the suspect once again disappear to an unmonitored sector of the house. Investigation Day 11. 
The internal surveillance team watches video feeds, hoping to gather more evidence for Lance. Once again, cameras placed in the house show Lance's mother and stepfather entertaining another couple. The group chats, enjoys a few beverages, and watches a movie. As the night winds down, the interesting couple say their goodbyes and depart. Shortly after Lance's mom leaves for work, companion Barton emerges from his bedroom and heads toward the family room where he rendezvous with the suspect. While the suspect watches TV, companion Barton can't take his eyes off of her. Lance's wife reveals her true colors in this recorded phone call with her husband. Hey, baby, what are you doing? Just got back from uh, my last interview of the day. How'd it go? I think everything went okay. It's still going to be a while before I know anything, but keep my head up, right? Well, don't get discouraged. We work out, I know. I know. Everything works out in the end, but... What are you up to? Just hanging out. Uh, Mark and your mom are gone, so I was watching a movie. I wish you were here. I did too, I did too, but I'll be home soon, and uh, maybe we can go out for dinner or something, hopefully. I can't wait. All right, sweetie. Well, you get some rest, and I'll give you a call tomorrow. Okay, I love you. Love you too. With more than enough evidence, investigators head to headquarters to compile their findings for Lance. Coming up, the confrontation. With evidence of his wife's indiscretions documented on tape, Cheaters prepares to confirm Lance's worst suspicions. A resolute Lance prepares to face reality, for better or for worse. Lance, thanks for being here this evening. Thank you. I know the circumstances that have brought you to us are those that have caused you quite a bit of concern. Absolutely. Lance, our detectives have some information that may provide you with some of the answers that you're seeking. Okay. Are you ready to take a look at some of that I information think I am. now? Yeah. On this instance, our detectives followed. It appeared that this was a pre-designated meeting area because as she arrived, there was someone that was waiting in the parking lot for her. She gets out of her vehicle, gets into the second vehicle, and they were followed until they arrived at this Is establishment. It's my stepfather. This pretty much looked like a dinner between two people who were familiar with one another. Right. Once they arrived back at the house, we were able to take advantage of the cameras that you did place inside. Okay. There doesn't seem to be anything out of the ordinary than people who live in the same home sitting down, taking on a show. On this day, starts pretty much off like the evenings that we've seen in the past. Family sitting around watching TV, your wife's there, your dad's there, there's another gentleman that I believe to be a, an acquaintance of your, your, your stepdad. Yeah. People start to peel off as the evening winds down. And up until this point, people had been drinking uh, substantially. Okay. Your stepdad moves over to the sofa. <sighs> oh, I can't even see this anymore. Carries her into the other room. At this point, your wife still thinks you're out of town. If I had great news to tell her, too. My question to you is, armed with this information, would you like to confront your wife? Oh, you're damn right. And oh, you're damn home? right. Absolutely. Absolutely. OK, I'm going to have you come with me, and we'll make a few phone calls from the car. Yeah, it's Joey. Everyone's still there. OK. Well, we're rolling right now, so we should be there shortly. If there's any movement, just keep me posted. We're moving right now. Look look for us out front. Let's just pull over right here. We need to stay close. Everyone stay together. Everyone All right. Together, stay together. We're going to the side doors. The side door is always unlocked. Everyone quiet. Go ahead. All right. Okay, keep everybody tight. Keep everyone together and quiet. Okay, watch out for cars. Okay, let's move.
bastards. You know exactly what it is. <laughs> you know exactly. How could you do this to me? To me. Your husband has been carrying on with his wife. With her? Wait, ladies, ladies, ladies. Stop, stop. Ladies, it's okay. Relax. Come on. Stop. Coming up, the conclusion. Stepdad moves over to the sofa. Unbelievable. With her? Yeah. I love you so much. You yeah, whatever. You know whatever. What How can you sit there and say that to me like that? I saw the video. I saw the video. I saw the video. You don't understand? No, it doesn't lie. You can't lie to me anymore. Who is it? Why'd you do it to me? I huh? didn't do nothing. To you. Why'd you do it to me? Boy, I never hit you as a child. What? Boy, I will whoop your ass, Bring it, man. Bring it. Me, little boy. Oh, you're such you a big some. man. I want some. Gentlemen. Hey, you got to play it, kid. This is a good shirt. I didn't ask for this. It's you. Neither did I. Her. Don't you dare blame me. I was coming home with good news. You think it was going to make a difference who it was going to be? Or some damn to My wife and see my mom. Don't care. Are you crazy? Why would you do this? Oh, baby, oh, baby. Do this off. Oh, Just oh, come oh, here. Get out of here. Oh, oh, tell me, tell me, oh, oh, baby. Oh, tell me. I love Look you, at her sweet little ass. How bad did you want that? Yeah. I got the job in Seattle. Thank you very much. How are you people anyway? You out of my house, baby. Ouch. That's just great. That's just damn great. Get out of here, you loser. Bye. Security guy. Stay close. How can I ever, Don't ever me. trust you again? We'll, we'll get out of here. We'll leave this place. Where, where? We'll, oh, so then we can go somewhere else? Yeah. You can cheat on me with somebody no, else? No, baby, you... You think I'm taking it you to Seattle him. with me? It was all him. I didn't want any of this. Do you people mind? <laughs> I don't even know what to do. <laughs> Is he gone? Is he gone, Lance? Yeah, he's gone. Okay. But it's not what you think. It's not what you what? think. What am I supposed to think? I just need some time, okay? Just please leave right now. I just want you to leave. Please, just leave. I don't even want to look at you right now. Don't worry about her now, Lance. That'll, that'll work its way out. Just take care of your mom right now. I'm okay, honey. I'm okay. How could he do this? Ten years. Ten years. With the confrontation behind him and a fresh outlook on life, Lance struggles to put the events into perspective. Later in the show, Cheaters update she won his progress. But now, Cheaters welcomes back a former companion from the Raven Young case. Willing to come forward, the companion speaks openly about the day she was confronted on Cheaters. Identity withheld, age 27. The companion returns to explain her side of the story. I see you guys on TV, but I never realized that I would be one of you guys' victims. Um, I was I was shocked. 
when I saw these camera crews coming towards our way, I didn't know what to think. I mean, she just ran up and started hitting him and cussing him, and I'm like, what, what's going on? Hey, I'm taking care of your bitch. You want to deny her? Hey, you want to deny my bitch? 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 Like I'm sorry. I told her I was sorry. If I, w if I had known about her, I would have never dated him. I wouldn't even gave him the time of day. But being that I didn't know, you know, all I can tell her is I'm sorry and I'm more of a woman to act crazy over a guy. You know, she chose him and I'm letting him go. What the hell is going on? Don't deny my baby now. I don't give a f this baby's hoods. Get out of my way. I don't got no baby by your stupid ass. Okay, you better put that. You better put that. You better put that. You better put that. Ladies and gentlemen, you better take your ass home. After the confrontation, I didn't want to have anything else to do with him. He would try to contact me. I would, I would not answer my phone, you know. I just basically, I'm hurt, and I don't want to have nothing else to do with any man like that in my life, period. Wait a minute, you ain't even told me nothing about her. No, you don't tell me anyway, that. I'm very sorry, I ain't got no favor by your ass. What the f*** gonna do? What the f*** gonna do? You gonna take me on the Marshall? You can take me on the Marshall. Bitch, you can keep saying she not yours. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. You gonna leave by the f*** because he ain't leaving with me? You still deny, and then you gonna try to act like you ain't know her? How? You can't even be man when you get caught. This experience has changed my life dramatically. Um, I know I can't just give my all. Half of my heart's gone because I was crazy about this guy, and for him, he 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 hurt me bad to where it's gonna be very difficult for the next man to come into my life. So right now, I'm just at a point to where I have to be my own best friend for a minute. After the confrontation, Lance Follett makes it very clear that he cannot forgive his wife for what she did. Lance says nothing she could ever do could undo the pain that this has caused my mother and me. Horrified by her own actions, the suspect pleads with Lance for forgiveness. She claims, I never wanted it to happen. It just... Oh, you better tell me! Man, get the camera out of my face! Get away from me! I just swear to God, I'll show you! <laughs> this is, like, not how this is supposed what? to work. This is the only one. This is for you, Real Reality Television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Hello, I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for watching this installment of Cheaters. Please meet Bill Kennedy, a man convinced that his wife of 20 years obscures the truth behind her recent activities. Ready to put an end to his speculation, Bill enlists the help of Cheaters Detectives to settle the matter. Bill Kennedy, age 45, a business owner worried that his wife uses his long working hours to encourage another man's advances. Uh, I remember the night we met, it was at a George Jones concert, and uh, she's the most beautiful woman I ever saw, and we immediately hit it off, and it was just torrential love and good feelings. You know, she's out with the girls every night. Uh, she won't answer her phone when she's out. And why not? If she's just out with the girls, won't she answer her phone? You know, when I try to talk to her about this behavior, uh, basically, she just kind of goes off. Uh, she says, you're a control freak. Uh, you know, why do you want to know where I am every minute of the day? Uh, I'm not trying to be a control freak. I just want to know what's going on in my life, in my wife's life. I want to get my life back. I love my wife. And I don't want to believe that she's cheating on me. I want to believe that I'm probably just being a little paranoid. 
But if she is cheating, well, I don't know what I'll do then. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Suspect's identity withheld, age 42. A homemaker suspected of leaving her family in the dark concerning her extramarital avocations. Investigation day four. Upon getting the call from headquarters, field agents assemble outside the suspect's home and set up for a stakeout. In search of hard evidence, cheater sleuths wait for movement outside. After several hours on the job, cheater's PIs catch a break as an unknown male approaches the door and vanishes inside. A short time later, the suspect and her companion emerge, hop in her car, and take off. After a brief pursuit, the couple arrive at a nearby restaurant. The suspect, whose identity remains withheld, and her companion decide to adjourn to the patio. Broken only by an occasional drag off their cigarettes, the two alternate their attentions between their drinks and each other. Agents studying the couple carefully decipher from their body language that these two are well acquainted. After making short work of their meal, the duo stroll across the street to a well-known watering hole. Inside, the suspect and her companion grab a quick cocktail. As the night wears thin, the pair decide to call it a night. Once they arrive at the residence, they cautiously disappear inside. After a brief stay behind closed doors, the companion emerges and jumps into an awaiting car. Field operatives recognize the car as belonging to the suspect's son, Chris. With some new questions raised, operatives halt this day of investigation. Investigation Day 8. In the early afternoon hours, Cheater's detectives once again set up a perimeter around the suspect's residence. After several hours of inactivity, Cheater's PIs spot the suspect as she exits her house. With Bill busy at work, the coast apparently is clear for the suspect as she makes her first stop at a downtown parking lot. Cheater's detectives keep a keen eye on the suspect and soon notice another vehicle pulling into the relatively empty lot. Moments later, detectives watch as her youthful companion from prior surveillance approaches her car. Cheater's intelligence now positively confirmed her young companion's identity as her son Chris's best friend, Daryl Smith. The pair drive to a popular Chinese bistro. After filling up on Asian cuisine, the two depart to their next location. Cheater's operatives follow the suspect and her companion to a gin mill located in an upscale part of town. Upon arrival, they take a seat in the bar and down a few drinks. On the way back to the car, the couple, apparently still hungry from the Chinese fair, decide to snack on each other. The suspect then drops Mr. Smith at his car and heads homeward. Investigation day 12. An internal surveillance team stationed outside the couple's home watch feeds from motion-sensitive cameras placed inside by a troubled bill. The surveillance team outside spots Companion Smith as he approaches the door with what appears to be an overnight bag. Cameras inside record as the suspect, her son Chris, and his supposed friend, Daryl Smith, sit and watch a movie together. An hour or so into the epic, Chris evidently gets tired and retires to his bedroom, leaving the lovebirds to their own devices. The level of the suspect's deceit deepens as represented in this recorded phone call. Titillated by the taboo, the suspect apparently wants to act out a scene from The Graduate, but this Mrs. Robinson seems to have no problem seducing her young man. Acquiring all the information necessary for a definitive evaluation, Cheater's investigators halt the inquiry. Coming up, the confrontation.
With the suspect's outrageous excursions well documented, Cheaters arranges a session with Bill to go over the details of the investigation. Filled with anxiety, Bill prepares for the unabridged truth. And Bill, thanks for being here tonight. I know this is a very difficult and trying time for you and your family. I noticed that you brought your son Chris along with you uh, for some moral support. Are you prepared to see what our detectives have been able to find out about your wife's activities? Oh yeah, let's do it. As our investigation started, we see a young gentleman arrive, rings the doorbell, he entered your home, and a short time later, is seen exiting with your wife. They depart and were followed until they arrived at a bar. Once inside, they have a few drinks. They weren't there too terribly long. Get back in the car and they go back to your house. After about 15, 20 minutes transpire, maybe a little bit longer than that, a car drives up. Smells fun. Chris, Chris. Come here. Yeah. Who's this? Was there an evening where you picked someone up yeah, it was my From friend. your own home. It was Daryl. That's, that's one of my best friends. Really? Yeah. Okay. On this day, our detectives were again outside your home. The same gentleman that we've identified as your, your son's friend arrives at your home. Midway through our investigation, do you recall when we had you place some hidden cameras inside of your home? I sure do. Your wife, son Chris, and his friend Daryl spent some time watching television or a movie. As the evening elapsed, your son, Chris, takes off. And because you didn't return, we pretty much assumed you went to bed. Because once they felt comfortable enough, they go into your bedroom. What the hell? Look at this. It's crazy. Let me check with the detective right now okay. and see what we can find out. It's your friend. Yeah, we just finished up with the briefing very well. Upset, but, but hanging in. Tell me what you have. They met earlier this evening and are at a bar watching a baseball game right now. Okay, we're on our way right now. Okay, bye. Excuse me one second. Yeah. So we're gonna go right in the front? All right. Like this. They've been there and they've been drinking quite a bit. So I, I just be calm. Good. All right, we're yeah. not gonna let this get out of hand. All right, yeah. all right, we're coming up right now. I see you. Perfect. All right, guys, we're not jumping out, right? Slow. Bill, come with me. Okay, where are they? Where are they? So you just go. So you just go. Go where? Okay. Go. What's up? Your son out here to see you. What's up, Daryl? No, we're just having a drink. Yeah, right. Well, guess what, honey? It's pretty much all over. We know all about this. Take care of business, son. No, no. Let's take care of it. What's, what, what's Chris doing here? Why is Chris doing here? Because he's no. kidding. He's taking care of it. No, it's not his fault. It's not his fault. No, there's something happening. Remember? No, there's something happening. He's just having a drink. It's my fault. It's OK. It's all right. Coming up, the conclusion. Look at this. They're at a bar watching a baseball game right now. What's up? Take care of business, no, son. Get away. You he didn't go to the counselor. To you didn't go to the counselor. You didn't do anything you're supposed to do. 
Because you're too busy with your little boy toy. Get your ass in the car and keep it. You got the car, you got the oh, boobs. No, get out of here. No, Leave him alone. Leave him alone. alone. my son. No, yeah, no, well, no. I think you adopted please. his friend. Please. Let's go. Come on. Please. Just no. get away from us. Go get your car. I you got your car. You, you got your boobs. I love you. Please. You got your dental work. You got everything. You got all the money you needed. Go. Get away. We're done with you. It's all right. It happens. It does. We're done with this. I love him. I misunderstood. I, I just, Joy, yes, I would have went. Okay, hang on, hang on. Chris is coming right now. Chris, I'm so sorry. I love your father. I'm so sorry. With Daryl? What are you thinking? I'm so sorry. I know he's your friend, and yeah, I'm I so know. sorry. It's going to take us some time. It's going to take us some time. I'll do you anything. Know. Tell your father I'll do anything. I will do anything. I love you, too. You know what? I, I don't love know. you. I love you so much. I don't know. Much. That's, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. I'm so With sorry. Daryl? I didn't know anybody else. I'm so sorry. I'm 22 so years, sorry. you just threw away. So All of us. He's a home wrecker. No, he's your friend. It's no, not, not his fault. It's not my buddy. It's not, your, it's not his fault. I did it. It's, it's my fault. Why don't we get you to head back in the van? Are you out of here for you? So. Right, cool. well, here, you know, it's, why don't you just head up there? Okay, watch out. Watch out. She's taking it. All right, yeah, let's just get you back this way. I know at the moment you have to feel like your family's torn apart. There's a big part missing from it now. I'd like for my boys, you know, to understand that a relationship isn't always turn out like this. There are good things in life. And being in love and having children, it doesn't always end up like this. This is an exception. After the confrontation, Bill tries to find a silver lining amidst the unpleasantness. At the end of the show, Cheaters explores how Bill fares in the months to come. But next, Cheaters presents the suspect from the Shea Ethan case. The suspect comes to Cheaters to make sure his side of the story is properly recounted. Suspect's identity withheld, age 45. The suspect stops by Cheaters to tell us how his experience on the show has been an influence in his everyday life. As far as me laying down and say that I'm uh, a, a bad person, uh, I don't think I, I'm a bad person. Uh, as far as uh, this episode here, from, I will always be on my guard for cameras and people in black shirts running my damn way when I'm uh, wherever I am and whoever I'm dealing with. Uh, hopefully, uh, this won't. I'm not admitting that I, I do this again, but I am saying that uh, my life will go on. Why have you been lying to me? Salty language isn't necessary. Okay, why have you been lying to me? Yeah, I just want some answers. That's, What's that's, the answer? Well, so. I want some answers. I don't, I don't have any Why have you been lying to me? I'm sorry, man. Seeing this young lady almost a you year. You work in the States for a year, and you've been coming, flying in town, being with me, standing in my house. Are you serious? Playing with my baby, being a father figure to my baby, lying to me. Why are you making all these promises Look. to me? Only I try, love you. Try to console, I love try to you. No, I somebody. love you. That's all. I'm going to get a house with you. I'm going to move closer to you. What's going through my head is everything but the truth. I just didn't know what in the hell to say. You know how it is when you get caught? With your hand in the damn cookie jar, you don't know what the hell to say. And you know your hand's in the jar and you're still alive. Well, I got there, I was trying to find a lie to fix it up. But that, I could not do it. I, I, I. It was just too much chaos. I don't know what you're talking about. Half the okay, state. Okay, I'm gonna show you. Don't know what I'm talking about. Look, 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 look. look. I can't Watch take out. no more Watch of this. I always go out. We're straighten this out. We're just straighten this out. We're just straighten this out. I, I don't know this. I don't even know this. I don't even know what she's talking about. My wife and I, I doubt if this, we'll be able to work this out. But for as I feel. I don't feel I did anything really wrong. I, I just think I made a mistake and I deserve another chance. Uh, and I believe uh, 
uh, I'll get that. Whether I get it with my wife and Shay, I just have to, I, that, the, uh, that'll be known in the future. Look at that. She look, 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 I believe there's uh, room for rehabilitation. Let's do it. If you don't want to do it, then be a woman enough to tell me. That's what I have to say to them. Bill Kennedy states that the life he knew will change due to the discoveries made by cheaters. Because of his wife's betrayal, Bill has filed for divorce. A heartbroken Bill says, I gave that woman everything she wanted, money, love, and the best years of my life. Bill's wife knows that she has a lot to answer for and claims that her recent fling was nothing more than a midlife crisis. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheaters. Greetings, I'm Joey Greco. Welcome to another episode of Cheaters. Please meet Raven Young, a troubled woman who suspects her boyfriend seeks the attention of another woman. Fed up with excuses, Raven seeks out the experts at Cheaters to investigate her concerns. Raven Young, age 26, an office worker worried that her boyfriend has filed her away in the outbox. I mean, in the beginning, we used to hump everywhere, here, there, anywhere, wherever he wanted it, it was going down. Whenever he wanted it, wherever he wanted it, in the most odd places, at the most odd times, he sometimes would come home in the middle of the day just to get some, and now, it's just nothing. We don't hump. We don't do nothing. We don't even, he doesn't even give me, you know, affection. There's several times he's lied to me and said, oh, I'm going to visit my mother or, or whatever have you. And I would call his mother's house where that's where he says he's going to be. And she says she hasn't spoken with him all day and he ha she hasn't seen him, you know, in a couple of days. So I found these in his car and they're open, some of them. All of them aren't even in the pack, so he say they're his homeboys. He left them in a the car. He let his boy borrow his car. Well, if they are his homeboys, when his homeboys' fingerprints be on, not his, I want to know if his fingerprints are on these. I always told you in the beginning. I told you from the very beginning. If you don't want to be with me, there's something else that you want. It's something else that you want to do, and you don't want to be with us, hey, let me know. All you have to do is tell me the truth. Don't lie to me about anything, because if you lie to me, it's just going to make it worse. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Chris Haynes, age 29, a sanitation supervisor accused of cleaning up with the ladies. Investigation day two. Agents catch up with Chris as he putters through a residential area. Detectives in hot pursuit of the suspect trail him to an unknown residence. As the cheater's crew watches, suspect Chris Haynes exits his vehicle and ducks inside the mysterious domicile. Soon, the suspect emerges with an unknown female. Gumshoes tail the twosome to an all-night diner known for pancakes. Suspect Haynes and his date share some syrup while he appears to butter her up. Having their fill of hotcakes, the couple adjourn to their next destination. A few miles away, the suspect and his companion arrive at a movie multiplex. After taking in the latest love story, the duo walk hand in hand to the car. Cheaters agents follow the suspect and his companion back to her residence. Under the cover of night, the two disappear inside. 
Sometime later, the suspect resurfaces and departs. Investigation Day 5. On a hunch, a team of operatives stake out the residence from prior surveillance. The chancy move to watch the companion's home pays off when field operatives spot the suspect heading inside. Sometime later, the suspect and his companion, whose identity remains withheld, emerge and drive away. Suspect Haynes apparently decides to treat his companion to a shopping spree at a discount supercenter. Cheaters inspectors follow the duo inside to see just how much suspect Haynes shells out for his lady friend. The suspect shows his indifferent attitude toward Raven in this recorded telephone call. After an elongated stay inside, the suspect returns to his car and takes off. Investigation Day 11. Once again, Cheater's detectives track the suspect to the companion's place of residence. Agents make visual contact with suspect Haynes as he enters his companion's home. Sometime later, the two depart. Cheater's detectives track the couple to a local billiards bar. Inside, undercover agents deploy micro cams that show suspect Haynes and his companion less interested in the game than in each other. Upon completion of the game, the twosome make their way back to the companion's abode. About 30 minutes later, a statuesque figure approaches the door. Detectives, curious about the nature of this beauty's business, send operatives to get a closer look. Through a window, detectives watch in awe as the unknown female performs seductive dances for the couple. After their private dancer hits the road, these two fired-up philanderers make a beeline for the bedroom. With a final piece of evidence to bring suspect Haynes to justice, Cheaters PIs head to headquarters to compile their findings. Coming up, the confrontation. With Chris's infidelity set in stone, Cheaters expedites the information to Raven. Prepared for the gravity of the situation, Raven is ready to study the surveillance carefully. Raven, we appreciate you being here this evening. Uh, I know that the last few months have been kind of rocky in your relationship with Chris. And I know this is something that you're not going into lightly. Are you ready to take a look at some of that information? Yes. As our investigation starts, Chris was followed until he arrived at a residence. Chris gets out, goes to the door, spends a short period of time there before he's seen exiting with another young woman. They were followed until they arrive at a restaurant that's well known for flatjacks and, and assorted syrups. And there we do have a visual of Chris inside with this young lady as they dine. Once they completed dinner, they did walk out, were followed to a movie theater. There you can see briefly that they're holding hands as they go in. Our detective did stay on site throughout the movie, and as they left, we again see them holding hands. On this evening, they were followed until they arrived at a billiard hall. They spent some time shooting pool, and after a few hours there, they returned back to the home of this young lady. After a while, another young lady arrives. Our detective was able to capture some activity we can only assume is a precursor to events that will take place later that evening. That young woman was only there for about an hour, maybe a little bit more. After she left, Chris and his lady friend retire. I don't want to see no more. That's enough. You had found a I box of prophylactics inside Chris's car. Right. 
with the evidence that you provided us with. Our detectives dusted for prints. Excluding your fingerprints, the only other prints that were found on that box were Chris's. I'm going to call the detective right now and see if we can find out exactly where he is right now, okay? Just to take one second. You're going to be all right? Okay. Yeah, we just finished up with the briefing. Tell me what you have. Picked her up. They just arrived at a pool hall. You have one, someone on the inside? All right, we're going to load up and come right now. You ready to go? Come with me this way. We've got a detective outside. It's the clicks on Skillman. There's a detective outside, and we've got one inside as well. Okay. As we go into the pool hall, they're sitting in the back left corner. Okay, terrific. We'll be there in about, I think, 15 seconds. All right. There's a detective should be in the parking lot as we pull in. Yeah, there's a detective right there. Okay, come on. Keep going, Knock me out. Knock me out. Knock me out. Get your hands out. 
I don't know if we need to take your ass home. You know, if you if you need a ride home, we'll have a detective. Yes, please, take because care I'm, not okay. I'm not getting in the car. I'm not getting in the car. Okay. okay. We'll have a detective and they'll take care of you okay. and get you. I'm home. very sorry. I did not know. It's cool. I'm so sorry. I ain't even tricked. I didn't even know. Here ho. You know what? You won't even you won't even you you still I'm trying to act like you don't know her. Still trying to act like you don't know her. Damn, she's still talking. Damn. It's mine. Car is mine. You got it on tape. I don't give Don't call me. What is going on here? Where's the justice at, man? I'll tell you, you got my face. Huh? Huh? You'll never experience life to its fullest unless you know how to love. It makes me want to like build up a wall not to trust anybody. It makes me want to teach my kids not to trust anybody, you know, just so easily, you know, get to know that person and, you know, okay. find out what they're really about first. But you know that's what you have to fight against. Yeah, because the heart, it make you do crazy things. Following the confrontation, Raven attempts to put everything into perspective. At the conclusion of this presentation, Cheaters unveils her final thoughts. But now Cheaters welcomes back the companion from the Chad Cash case. Willing to come forward, the companion speaks candidly about his actions on the day of the confrontation. Identity withheld, age 29. The companion explains his part and defends his love for the suspect. Honestly, I think a little a little fear went through my head when he came busting through that fence. Uh, I kind of knew the game was up, except the fact that he lunged at me. I don't usually handle my affairs in that sort of manner. Frankly, I turned pretty angry and uh, really lost my cool. Come on, guys, gentlemen. Watch out, watch out. Watch out, watch out. Get in there, get in there. Get him out! I'm gonna kill you! You shut up, bitch! Shut up, bitch! Come on, boy! I took in consideration that she was married. Um, basically, that's how the relationship started off. She and I have a wonderful relationship today. Um, and with the events happening as they were, I honestly see what kind of man he really is. I, I blame him for how all this came about. I don't feel guilty for what I've done. I want you out. This is our, our house. house. This is our, our house. house. And you bring this piece you of sit here by you myself, myself while you're working out. You think I am you. you. All of you people. All of you. You, you bop yeah. freak. And that's what I'm talking about. Come here. Stop! Stop! Do not hurt him! Do not hurt him! Take him and get out of here. Just get out! Get out! I'm sure Chad is pretty upset about this whole situation. I, 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 I probably would have been too. I don't really have much to say to him, and I don't care to see him either. Yeah, I just, I just don't care for the fellow at all. But if I had to apologize. Uh, if I had to be the bigger man and apologize for my side of it, I still don't think I could do it. I can't even get out of my driveway! Okay, all way get the in your car. Don't put it past me. I swear to God, I'll take you all out. I have never felt this way about anyone in my life. And it's all gone pretty quickly. They're going to be divorced soon. We're already engaged. I'm really excited. Uh, I couldn't foresee this happening, but... We're going to be married, and we're going to live a happy life together. Legitimately taken aback to learn that Chris had cheated, Raven Young now tries to move ahead. Looking past her feelings of betrayal, Raven hopes to better the situation for herself and her children. Redefining her life, Raven has decided to focus on what she wants and put men on the back burner for a long while. 
With her children by her side, Raven looks forward to this new chapter in her life. And you better tell me! Man, get the camera out of my face! Get away from me! I swear to God, I'll show you! This is like not how this is supposed what? to work! This is the only one! Just remember, I got it on camera! I'm sorry! I've run every day, I'm sorry! Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Welcome, I'm Joey Greco. Thanks for turning on Cheaters. Please meet Doris Warren, a devoted wife worried that her husband has begun an illicit relationship with another woman. Wanting the facts, Doris contacts Cheaters for answers. Doris Warren, age 44. The housewife worried that her husband courts another woman during his overtime hours. I've known him for a little over 20 years, and we dated off and on, and then we got married, and we have two children. On an average, he's been telling me that he's going in, working double shifts three to four nights a week, and uh, I've just seen a difference in his attitude. He's been very distant. Uh, we don't communicate as much as we used to. Um, he's not as loving as he has been in the past, and I recently found a check stub when, um, according to the check stub, it shows that he's just been working minimum amount of hours, and I suspect that he's having an affair. When he comes in, uh, he'll eat dinner, he'll look at TV, look at sports channel. Uh, we don't really talk a lot. I try to have, try to have a conversation with him, and his answers are very short. You know, like yes or no, or he may nod his head. And it seems as if he's really into looking at, you know, whatever is on the television. But he's not really open with me anymore. My son has suspicions. He asked me why is his dad never at home? Why is he, does he always have to go to work? Where is he? He tries to call him on the cell phone. And he's not able to reach him and he gets upset because he hardly ever sees his dad and he only ever spends time with him. And I see the hurt and pain, and he's even asked me, Mama, do you think my dad has another girlfriend? I want to be wrong, but I don't believe that I am. Honestly, I don't believe that I am wrong. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Suspect's identity withheld, age 46. A transportation supervisor accused of dispatching his affections to someone new. Investigation day four. Agents tail the suspect as he drives through a residential district. Detectives follow the suspect to an unknown house. After parking his car in the driveway, the suspect exits his vehicle. Agents watch the suspect, whose identity remains withheld, as he paces back and forth while talking on his phone. Field operatives note the suspect has what appears to be an overnight bag in his hand. Cheaters gumshoes get word from headquarters that the suspect is talking to his wife, Doris. After completing his conversation, the suspect finally enters the strange residence. This leaves Cheaters investigators with a lot of unanswered questions. Investigation Day 6. With Doris's help, agents peruse the suspect's phone records. As suspected, one of the phone numbers listed matches the address from the previous day. Detectives return to watch the house. After a few hours into the stakeout, agents spot an unknown vehicle. The driver pulls into the garage of the residence, and the vehicle quickly disappears behind the closing garage door. A short time later, an unknown man emerges and appears to take out the trash. Again, the door swiftly closes behind him, leaving detectives with little to work with. Moments later, the suspect arrives at the house and vanishes inside. After a brief respite indoors, the suspect re-emerges with his companion, whose identity remains withheld. The couple get into the vehicle and depart the scene. A few hours later, the duo return home. 
Before heading inside, the companion backs her car out of the garage, which allows the suspect to park his car in the other car's place. After this game of musical parking spots, the couple retire inside the companion's house, where they remain for the duration of the night. The next morning, operatives working the early shift spot the companion grabbing the morning paper. The companion heads inside, and Gumshoes notice the suspect's car still parked in her garage. Investigation Day 10. On stakeout in front of the companion's residence, Cheaters detectives watch the garage door open. Carefully monitoring the scene, agents spy the suspect getting into his vehicle. Moments later, detectives notice the companion backing up her car. And just like before, the suspect swaps cars in the garage. Duplicity and deceit seem to suit the suspect, as displayed by this recorded phone call with his wife, Doris. With confirmation of her husband's improprieties, Cheaters prepares a report for the disillusioned Doris. Coming up, the confrontation. With conclusive evidence of the suspect's deception in hand, Cheaters contacts Doris to break the news. With a heavy heart, Doris prepares herself for the truth. Doris, thank you for being here tonight. I know you've waited quite some time to find out the information that our detectives have. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to take a look at that now? Yes. As our investigation started, he left work and was followed until he arrived at a residence. Before he goes in, he spends quite some time on the phone. He did spend a considerable amount of time at that residence that evening. On this day, we had a detective that was stationed outside of this residence. We do observe a woman pull in. There's this period of time that transpires before your husband arrives at that location. He comes out. The young ladies with him, they take off. As they returned, we see a little swap thing happen where the woman backs her car out of the garage, your husband backs into the street, and what happens is she leaves her car in the driveway and he parks in the garage. They go on inside from that standpoint. Yep. You I recognize see. That? Yeah. Okay. The next morning, our detective was there, and as the garage door was opened, you can see that... He's still there. He's still there as she came out to get the morning paper. My suspicions were true. And your intuition was correct. Yeah, very correct, as I see. I'm going to go ahead and contact the detective right now, and I'll see if he can give us an update on your husband's whereabouts. Okay. <laughs> Gomez. Tell me what you have. Okay, Gomez is at your home, but all the lights are out right now. Okay. Okay. We have a detective at your house, and we have a detective at the other location. All right, we're just going to load up and be on standby. Ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. Come on. I think Detective Gomez is here, and he may have an update for us. Okay, let me explain to you what's going on right now. We have a detective sitting in front of your house who watched your husband leave for work this evening. We've had another detective sitting at the companion's house waiting for your husband to show up. Now, your husband usually shows up between 10 and 10.30. It's midnight right now, and it doesn't appear he's going to show up tonight. So what we're going to do is go ahead and cancel this for tonight and try it again really soon. No, we tried this last week, but we were unsuccessful, as sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. Have you spoken with your husband tonight? Yes. What did he say? 
He said he was at home going over some paperwork with my son-in-law. You did give a detective some information. You know what type of a truck your son-in-law drives. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. The detective drove by the house and was your son-in-law's vehicle there? No. Our detectives continue to investigate and follow your husband. Your husband has been continuing to spend time at the home of this other young woman. I'm going to check with the detective right now because we have reason to believe that your husband is not at your house. Okay. Gomez, tell me what's going on. Joey, go to Polo and Carrier Parkway and sit there. I've ordered a wrecker. What the wrecker's gonna do is meet me outside the companion's house where I'm at right now. And from there, he's gonna turn the lights on, start making some noises with his wrecker, and hopefully, Doris's husband will come outside. If he doesn't, I'm gonna go knock on the door and ask for him, and inform him that there's a wrecker driver in front of his yard. Once you see the signal, roll up as quickly as possible with your lights off. Okay, I'll see you in a minute, bye. Ms. Warren, we're now at the staging area where Gomez wanted us to wait. And here comes the tow truck that he spoke to us about. All right, everybody, listen up. Be very quiet, be very careful. Headlamps off until we get our subject. We've got a small window of time. When Gomez gives a signal, we're gonna have to move and we're gonna have to move quickly. How am I gonna get to him? Well, the tow truck's making enough noise where if the suspect was awake, I'm sure he'd stick his head out the door. Yeah, there goes Gomez. That looks like the sun. That looks like the sun. There they are. Okay, wait, let, let him get out a little bit farther. That's the signal. Yeah, there we go. This dude's big. That's me scared. What the hell are you doing here? What 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 are you doing here? Coming up next, the conclusion. Your husband has been continuing to spend time with this other young woman. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? You're supposed to be at home. You're supposed to be at home. Hey, Luke, don't touch no, you're supposed to be at home. You my husband and you man. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing here? Huh? Did you know that he was married? Now come on out. Doris, watch out. You need to get her out. Come on. You all right? No, 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 come on. I want to, I want to see her. We I want to confront her. We can her. talk to her, talk to her from here. We're not going to get you guys. Guys, come on out. Come on. Oh, good and damn well if he's married because she called my house. Okay. And I know whose house this easy, is. Easy, easy. I know whose house this is. Easy. I know. Well, yeah, you're what is this? What is this? What is this? You got my Hey, 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 hey. Walk out this way. Who are my shoes? I know he's been coming over here. I know you've been coming over here. I know you've been coming over here. Now, we've been in California. Son, but we ain't married. Trying to lay up me, but we ain't married. We ain't married, you lying bastard. I'm gonna love you till the day I die. Nobody will ever take your place, you lying bastard. You told me. Now, you want to lie to me and tell me we ain't married? No, you all about truth, remember? The truth. Let's hear the truth.
mad because his ass done got caught. He's supposed to be the player. Now the game has been played in, it's, it's been played in his head because he's been playing this stupid game. Following the confrontation, Doris decides whether her relationship can weather the storm. Later in this program, she discloses her course for the future. But first, Cheater speaks with April Holmes. April returns to discuss how her experience on Cheaters made her assess what's really important in life. April Holmes, age 29. April speaks her mind after volunteering to come forward to explain her position. Well, when the crew first came in, I was stuck in the box. I had David yelling at me. I was like, oh my God, what's going on? What are you guys doing? I'm hey, you, no, what the f Mortimer, 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 what? what is no, What are you doing with my girlfriend? Your girlfriend's in a illusion. Yeah, what? Get back. I'm with a pad. Mortimer, who are these people? I don't get the f Magic. Well, looking back on it, it was a shock at first, and it hurt me that he went to that far lengths to do that but it was kind of a nice gesture for him to do that because it made me feel that he really did love me and that's something that he didn't make me feel for a long time get back you're gonna get her hurt in that thing let me go let me go no no what are you talking you know what you don't know go go to your magic david I think he preys on women when they're in a vulnerable, weak state, and he sort of reminds me of a cult leader in that fact. He tries to keep you the way he wants you. Do you sleep with all your assistants? Is that part of the, the trial process? Is that part of the interview process? <laughs> do you do that a lot? Um, it's a common thing once in a, a while. Thing. Depends. Okay. Is that why you went? Is that why you went into his house and acted like his friend? And when he asked you if anything was going on, you said, no, don't worry about it? Is that why you lied to him? Is that part of the illusion? It's a secret. It's magic. This experience has changed me so much that I know who I am now, and I know it's good to be in love. And I know he'll love me forever, and I'll love him forever. Doris Warren has not yet fully recovered from the malevolent actions of her husband. Doris admits it may take time to purge herself of her spouse's memory. Doris has refused all requests to reconcile with her husband and has begun divorce proceedings. The suspect is under